many of Batman's relationships end in death? Welcome back, Nerd Squad. Here to discuss the answer to that question and many other questionable ones in terms of romance, we have returned to bring you another list where we dive into some weird Batman romances. I've been using the word dive a lot lately in my videos, and it's making me wonder if I'm just really missing the summer and swimming, but I digress. Batman has a ton of strange relationships over the years, most of them ending in tragedy because comics. But just how weird are these relationships? Well, you're about to find out as we count down the time Top 10 Weirdest Batman Romances Part 2. Let's get to it. Number 10, Sasha Bordeaux. I actually really like Sasha and even her relationship with Batman, I don't mind. It's more the premise of sort of how she was introduced and got involved with Bruce Wayne. Sasha was hired on to be Bruce Wayne's bodyguard, which like, I guess, okay, but does Bruce Wayne even need a bodyguard if he's Batman? Also, is it wise to hire a bodyguard when you have a secret identity and would then need to try and sort of sneak around them to just kind of keep that identity a secret? Just seems a little strange. Sasha ended up teaming up with Batman after she discovered his secret identity and another weird thing there is that she actually could keep up with bats when he usually spends years training people to be able to even keep up with him. Hmm. These two had a very brief romance, which would get dropped almost as soon as it was kind of introduced to us. Number nine, Catwoman. I know what you might be thinking, but Amanda, Cat and Bat is a classic. So classic, in fact, that we even have a Bat Cat Black Label series going on right now at DC. And hey, I agree with you, but the fact of the matter remains that the idea of Batman, who very passionately stands up for justice, ending up with a consistent criminal and thief like Catwoman doesn't really make a ton of sense. If we go back to that original meeting, you'd actually see just how ridiculous this relationship is in theory, and how crazy it is that Catwoman was able to get away just because Batman was attracted to her. In fact, this has kind of become a weird trope in the comics where when Selina does something criminal, Batman is usually still willing to kind of let her off. Like, he'll be like, don't do that, Selina, but in the end, he's probably just gonna let her get away with it. I just mean, I don't think he would act the same way if Mr. Freeze was stealing diamonds. Do you? Number eight, Silver St. Cloud. I honestly like Bruce and Silver together. Of course, weirdness does have to come into this relationship because Batman is never allowed to be happy. Weirdness came in the form of dramatic tragedy, which, let's be honest, is looming around the corner in pretty much every relationship Batman has. The particularly strange thing here is that Batman didn't seem to see it coming at all. He had begun to open up to trust both Silver and his new partner, Baphomet, even thinking of perhaps retiring. Obviously, letting his guard down was a huge mistake as it resulted in Silver's death, which really sucks because, you know, this means that it will make it even harder for Bats to like actually let people in again in the future, as if it wasn't hard enough for him. Poor Batman, he just can't get a break. Number seven, Batwoman, but not Kate Kane Batwoman, because that would be pretty weird considering that she's gay and she's also Batman's cousin. Instead, we're talking here about Kathy Kane, the first Batwoman who was introduced in the 1950s because people were worried Batman was turning kids gay. Oh, the shock, the horror. Wait, so is that how I ended up gay? Hmm. Not only is the reasoning behind why Kathy Kane needed to show up and date Batman pretty freaking weird, but also the idea that Kathy Kane would really be interested in Batman is also a little strange. It seemed like she never really needed a partner, so the relationship there felt a little bit forced. Still, it didn't stop writers from turning Kathy into a marriage-obsessed partner in crime and in romance, because that was the 50s in comics. Everyone's like, I'll trick him into marrying me. Number six, Zatanna Zatara. The weird part of these two together is that it's never really happened. Instead, we've only got teases about this and seen that both Bruce and Zatanna definitely have feelings for one another that they never really fully commit to acting on. I mean, maybe they had a thing when they were teenagers, but that's about it. That's the weirdest thing for me because I do feel like Bruce and Zatanna would actually make a pretty good couple together. And probably dating Zatanna would open up Batman to a whole new magical world. I mean, sure, he's dabbled in magic before, but he's never really like fully dove into that. See, I'm diving again. What's up with that? Similarly to how he seems to approach his relationship with his longtime friend and possible lover Zatanna herself. Just kind of like, putting a toe in, it's not gonna, it's not gonna fully jump in that pool. Number five, Julia Pennyworth. 
Maybe the most awkward relationship that Batman has had, if we can call it a relationship. Well, maybe not the most awkward actually, because there's been some pretty bad ones, but this one is definitely up there. Julia Pennyworth is Alfred's daughter, and she had a thing for Batman, although he never really reciprocated the feelings. This was still a strange one, especially the one moment when Julia kisses Batman after he saves her in front of his girlfriend, Vicki Vale, who did not yet know that Bruce Wayne was Batman, making her line about approving of Julia's move where she kisses Batman, so long as the recipient wasn't Bruce Wayne, pretty awkward. Because, yeah, we all know that he is Bruce Wayne. Yikes! Number four, Black Canary. Definitely one of the weirdest ones out there because we usually associate Black Canary with Green Arrow, which wouldn't that cause some bad blood between Green Arrow and Batman, who are usually both on the Justice League? You bet it would. These two have been shipped together in the comics a few times. One of the strangest times though has to be in All-Star Batman and Robin when they hooked up after Batman had a sexy display of his brute force and strength, which left Black Canary unable to resist him. I mean, I get that Batman is totally hot, as Black Canary calls him, and that he just helped Canary out there, he kind of like saved her, but I feel like it should take more than just that violent act for Black Canary to jump all over him. But hey, this is All-Star Batman, so no. The fact that Batman also seems to be thinking of Catwoman the whole time as well makes it a pretty awkward tumble around the smashed up docks. God damn, as Frank Miller would say. Number three, Poison Ivy. If you thought the relationship between Harley Quinn and Batman or Bruce Wayne was weird on the part one of this list, you are not going to believe the weirdness of Poison Ivy and the bats together on this list. These two together are just weird because there isn't a lot of consistency. It really depends on who's writing as to what kind of relationship they have. Sometimes Ivy loves Batman. Sometimes she hates him and is willing to kill him. Sometimes she's his ally, and sometimes she's a full-on criminal. I mean, I'm not against her character evolving and changing, but it's this weird back and forth as opposed to like any straight up progression or evolution that makes this one really weird for me. I'm okay if she has a relationship with Batman, but just, can we just like evolve that and like kind of commit to that and make that an overarching thing? And I'm okay if she's like, I want to kill Batman, but then can we just make that like more killing and overarching? villainy for her, I don't know. Number two, Becca. This one was just pretty random. Also, it relates to some of the manipulation tactics that we've seen characters like Poison Ivy use on Batman, which is both weird and also is kind of creepy. Becca was the wife of the new god Orion, son of Darkseid. Her powers basically allow her to create desire in those who turn away from love, even though Batman has actually welcomed love on more than a few occasions. I think he's just in denial about it. But anyways, her powers also apparently create desire in her as well. How convenient. Needless to say, these two had a short relationship caused by her weird powers before she inevitably went back to being with Orion. Number one, Nocturna. Just when you think it can't get any weirder, it most definitely can when we are talking Batman. Nocturna is a weird choice for not only Batman, but years later for Batwoman, Kate Kane too especially considering that her and Batman had a thing. Although I guess it's a different continuity. Batwoman and Nocturna have an even more stranger and problematic relationship, but this time around, we're here to talk about Batman. These two together weren't that terrible, actually, and Natalia Knight, AKA Nocturna, even became a sort of mother figure to Jason Todd. Or wait, does that make their relationship weirder? Cause I, yeah, I think it does. In the end, she was stabbed to death, but managed to get into a hot air balloon and soar over Gotham just as she died and passed into a red storm. I guess so she could have like one last nice view before bleeding out. Don't worry though, Nocturna would return as an actual vampire as opposed to just a vampire themed character who would then move from Batman to Batwoman. Man, that sounds like a weird dating like game show that I would not want to be on. <laughs> or maybe I would want to be on it. I don't know, who could I date from Gotham? There's some pretty cool people. Selena, Bruce. Although I don't know, Batman has a lot of problems. I think I just want to be friends with him. I don't think I'd want to date him. Who do you think are some of Batman's weirdest relationships? Who do you ship Batman with? Is there anyone you think that would be a great match for the Dark Knight who we haven't seen him paired with yet? Let us know in the comments below. And speaking of those comments, it's time to turn to some comments from one of our latest videos, top 10 times Batman wasn't Bruce Wayne. Bat John comments, I'm not surprised that Azrael is on the list as he is obsessed with becoming Batman. You are not wrong, he is definitely obsessed. And I've read some dark multiverse comics that have 
opened my eyes to just how obsessed he can be. Mike Belkak responds, just saw a commercial on TP here in America advertising Future State. I've never seen that ever. That is really weird. I'm not gonna lie, that's really weird. Carson Zito Bachamp says, I feel like Cassandra Kane should take up the mantle even if it's only for one issue. It'd be interesting to have his other daughter take it up. It would definitely be interesting to see Cassandra Kane become Batman. I would totally be into that. I love Cassandra Kane, and I do not think she gets enough love and respect in the comics, so bring it on. That's what I say. I don't know what you mean about her being like his other daughter, but I guess you mean like his adopted daughter, since yeah, she's like part of the Bat family. And that's all the time we have for comments today. Be sure to comment below for a chance to have your thoughts and feels are shouted out in a future video. This has been Top 10 Nerd, and I'm your host, Amanda McKnight. Till next time, you stay nerdy, YouTube, and I'll see you in the future.